Hello and welcome again to this video. My name is Max. So in this video, what I'd like to go over is what we need to do next after installing WordPress on our LAMP stack server. So let's go ahead and begin. As I said, we've already installed WordPress on our LAMP server. And so the next thing we need to do is we need to modify one of the fold or I'm sorry, one of the files in our WordPress folder. So I've already logged into my server. I'm in the folder right now. My WordPress folder or my WordPress site is named m69y.net. Okay? It's highlighted there. So the folder that we want to modify in here is going to be this folder right here. It's wp-config sample dot php that's the folder that we it's not the actual folder that we're going to modify but what we're going to do is we're going to make a backup of this fo of this file it's a file and then we're going to modify the backed up file okay so here's how we do that you go ahead and you choose whichever editing uh, uh, text editor you want to use. I like to use Nano and you will need sudo rights for this. So you just type in sudo space Nano space. Oh, I'm sorry. No, the first thing you want to do is make a copy of this uh, file. So it's sudo cp space wp. Once I learn how to type wp config dash sample and then you just want to create wp dash config space php that's the normal name that everybody chooses when they copy this file over you can go ahead and follow the same process after you do that you press enter it's going to ask you for your password you go ahead and input your password press enter and if there are no mistakes you're not gonna you're just gonna get uh, go to the next prompt then we're gonna go ahead and clear the screen and we do that with a control L and then we do another list list the di uh, directory LS press enter and here is the folder so what we did was we made a backup copy of this folder and we named it I'm sorry, I keep saying folder and what I really actually mean is file. So we made a backup copy of this file and we named it this. So after that, this will be the file that we go ahead and modify. It has some um, settings in there that we need to modify so that we can go ahead and install your WordPress uh, application online. So the next thing we need to do now is we need to go ahead and go into that file and we just do a sudo wp or wait a minute nano wp dash config and we'll tab it out and then we're going to press enter so this is our wp dash config file now before we continue turn uh, any further what you're going to need to do is the notes that we took for creating your database earlier in the last video, I believe it was, you're going to need those notes because you're going to need three things. Let's bring them up now. You're going to need the database name that you created. You're going to need the, the username of that database that you created. And then you're going to need the username password. Okay, because what we're doing now is we're going to connect our WordPress to the database that we made in the last video. You need to do this because WordPress needs a database in order to function because that's where it's going to keep all of its data as far as the database, the user name, user information, and the password. All that it's going to need. And so what we're going to do is we're going to modify this file because this file has that information in your WordPress folder or file. So 
using, as I said, using whatever uh, text editor you want to use, you're going to open up this um, this backed up doc this back backed up document, and you're going to scroll down until you come right here. And there are going to be three things that you need to modify. You're going to need to modify the database name, database user, and the database password for the database user. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to input the database name. So we're going to take out this default. Then you're going to go back to your notes of the database that you created earlier. And you're going to put in your database name. We're going to do a copy. Come back here. And you can do it one of several ways. You can do a right click and a paste. Okay, or on your keyboard, you can hit the, the shift, the control, and then the V button, V as in Victor, and that should give you the same result. So you can paste it one of either way. Okay, and then we go to the next line. That's going to be for the database user. And as we said, that's the one we created earlier. So we'll go back to our notes. And our database user is user1. So we're going to copy that. And we're going to put it in here. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to put in the database password for that user, for user1. OK, go back to our notes. Get the password, copy that, put it in there. All right, so now that part is done. The next thing we need to do to make sure that our, um, that our passwords are encrypted is we're going to need to do what is known as salting it, OK? And all that does is that just protects our password and encrypts it so that nobody can see it when if they're trying to uh, no hacker can can see it when you're inputting it to get into your database. And so what you do is you scroll down after that after that and you come down here to where it says authentication unique keys and salts. And what you want to do is you want to get the encryption codes that you need to put in and the encryption codes are going to go right here this whole this whole section right here this is where you're going to put your encryption codes now let's go back and I'll show you where to get those codes from you're going to come back up here and you're going to see this link right here you're going to copy this link or you can right click it and then copy copy the, the link right then you're gonna open up a browser and you're gonna put in that link and go to it and this is the information that you need right here this will go ahead and encrypt your password now what you can do which is a general practice is before you put in this information you want to go ahead and refresh the screen several times. That way you make sure you get a, a good uh, sampling of the, of the keys. And then after you do that, you go ahead and copy them all. Then you go back to your WordPress file. And then you're going to want to come down here and you're going to want to paste them right in here. Oops, that didn't work. Okay, hold on. Then let's do this. Oh. You, 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 where is you? If you make a mistake, usually you can on the keyboard you can do a control U huh? okay I 
it didn't work. All right. I didn't know what we're going to do. We are going to go ahead and just manually get rid of it. And all I'm doing right now is just hitting the backspace. Boom. And there we go. And that is all you need to do. Minus the... Minus the... Um, the mistake that I made. And so you just copy and paste it. You want to make sure it lines up though. So one more and there we go. Okay and it looks like that is perfect. Just double check to make sure. Alright and so you're good to go. Just like I said, make sure everything is lined up. Oops. And there we go. And so that's what I call it. I call it salting the keys. Uh, or, but you know, I guess other people, more professional people, would call this um, encrypting your keys. Like I said, this is the reason why this is being done is so that you can go ahead and encrypt your keys so that if someone tries, to, if a hacker tries to do something similar to a man in the middle attack and he's trying to find, he's trying to um, get your username and password or do a brute force to find your username and password, he, at least this would, should stop him from seeing it uh, clearly. So, hope I explained that uh, clear enough. We should be good to go. After this, you should go ahead and save your this file. I normally do a Control S on my keyboard. That saves it, and then I do a Control X to get out of it. And you're good to go there. Okay. And then if you want to look at your changes, you could do a cat space WP dash config and then tab it out and then just to make sure we can do a pipe LSS less and from here you can go back and look over your changes that you've made and as we see we have modified our username database Username, database password, database name. And then if we go to the next page by pressing the space bar, we can see right here that we have encrypted our keys. So that's all we need to do to modify this, uh, this file. And then to get out of this, all we got to do on our keyboard is press the Q for uh, Quebec and we're out of it. So we're done with that. That's all we need to do for the WordPress file right there. However, what we need to do is we need to make a few more modifications so that we can see our WordPress site when we go online. So the next thing we want to do is move over to our Etsy folder. All right. And to do that from, from, your, uh, from the command line, you can do a CD space tap tap slice tap tap slice then you want to do uh, let's see dub dub and run this command var and then let's see we want to go to Etsy all right now we are in the Etsy folder okay and then from here, what we want to do is modify our host file. Okay. The reason why we want to do that is you want to modify your host, your host file so that your Apache server will know which IP address and what host or what website 
it will be serving data from. And so to do that, again, you're going to need sudo writes for this. You're going to need sudo writes for, for modifying most files. And then you just go ahead and type in sudo and then type in your favorite um, uh, editor, text editor. And for me, it's going to be nano. And then we want to edit the host file. And then we press enter. And this right here is our host file. And let's go back to our notes. And this is what we want to put in right here. And so we just scroll down. And then we go ahead and we paste in our information. As I said, there's several ways you can paste it in. On your keyboard, you can just press the shift and the control button, and then at the same time, uh, the V button. So press all, all, three of, all three of those buttons at the same time. Shift, control, and the letter V, or the button V, V as in Victor, and that inputs your information. <clears throat> and so what we have here is, this is the server IP address, okay? Obviously, yours will be different. And then the two host names of your, your website. The first one is, and I don't want to click on it because then I'm probably trying to go there. The first one is www.yourwebsite.whatever. And then the next one is without the www, is just the website.com or .net, whatever it is. And then after you've made that modification, you can go ahead and save it, which for me is Control S to save, and then Control X to get out of it. And that's great. You're done with that. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to go over to the Sites Available folder. That's going to be in the Apache folder. So from here, what we do is we go CD to change directory into the Apache folder tab out and then we want to go from there to the sites available folder we'll tab into there okay let's go ahead and clear the screen and if we do a, a list for the directory ls we'll see that there's already some um, files in it right so what we want to do from here is we want to go ahead and create a file for our sites available and or for our, our website. So I already got the, the commands and the information from here. And this is what we want right here. We're going to create a file with this and we're going to put this information in there. Okay? So we also want to name this this uh, this file a certain way okay so let me go ahead and show you how we're going to do that again we're going to use our text editor nano and we're going to use sudo writes and it's going to be sudo nano and then we're going to give this fo this file a name it's going to be the website name that we created dot conf okay and then we're going to press enter you have to name it, whatever your website name is, .conf. You have to na name it that or else you'll be getting errors that you won't even understand or why it's happening. Okay, we do that. And then from there, we go ahead and input this information right here. This is so Apache will know what type of or which host or which website it needs to start serving from. Okay, and so we got the document root. This is where the website uh, rests inside the inside the uh, the uh, Apache server. Okay, and it's var space w w space, and then your website name. It'll be whatever name you created. This is the server name, and this is the alias. The alias is when most people go to your website, they won't type in the, the www.thewebsite name. They can just type in 
the website name .net or .com. And I skipped over this. This is your opening uh, virtual host star colon and then 80 because all all um, web servers start with uh, port 80. There are other ports that they use, but for Apache, it usually runs on port 80. And then we go ahead and close this bracket for virtual host. And then this right here, this is just a directory saying which uh, files we want, we want the web server to um, send out requests or, I'm sorry, responses for. Okay. And the first one is index, index PHP. And then if it doesn't see a file for index PHP, the next one that'll serve up to our clients will be index HTML and then in turn index HTM. Okay, hope I explained that uh, clearly enough. After that, you can go ahead and save the file and then you can go ahead and exit out of the file. And then you're good to go there. And then the next command we want to run Give me one second, because I forgot to write this one down and put it in the notes. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to go ahead and, and manually put this in. So give me a second. So what we need to do is run this command to activate it. And that's just going to be sudo. And then it's a two e n s i t e space. And then whatever our website name is, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this above. Then I'm just going to paste it right here. And then that's it. Then you press, this is going to activate the site. And then you press enter. And as you can see, it says there, enabling this site very good now to go ahead and activate the new configuration we're going to need to restart our Apache server and that's what we're going to do and we just that's not going to work we got to type in re restart press enter uh oh, and as you can see, oh, we needed to put in sudo, and I forgot to do that, but that's okay. Looks like it will accept our password if we type it in correctly. Okay, just to make sure, let's go ahead and do it one more time. And as we can see, it went ahead and restarted the uh, server success successfully. And then what I always like to do to make sure everything is working okay, I always like to check on the status real quick of your uh, web server. Press enter. And as you can see, it is active and running. Okay, now we can go ahead and uh, uh, quit out of that. Okay, so we're good to go. We can go ahead and clear the screen. We'll go ahead and type in clear this time. All right, and we're good to go. So that'll be it for the video of today. I appreciate all of you. I appreciate all of y'all looking at this video. Thank you very much for that. And as a shameful plug-in, I'd like to let you guys know that I do offer free web hosting services and free. Um, uh, free what am I trying to say WordPress WordPress websites I will include the link and the information to all applicable information as well as my contact information so I hope to hear from you guys soon I hope this video was of value to you thank you very much I appreciate you looking at this I hope you have a good day or night wherever you are
Thank you and have a good day. Bye-bye.